Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to see another of the gen operators, it's the sample operator, which allows us to do some very cool things with videos and uh, matrices in general. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay, so let's start by creating our little um, layout for working with uh, JIT gen. We just create a JIT movie. This is gonna be it, and then we need our JIT gen. Oh, JIT gen sounds good as well. JIT gen, and then we will use a JIT P window. All right, let's put some move inside this video. Let's maybe take the let's take our people guy. Oh, let me first give it to the volume zero. And let's take our Beeble guy. So let's use a Q metro to to bang the JIT movie object so we can actually see our video. And there it is. Okay, very well. Now, the object I want to talk in this video, the objects, the series of objects, are those objects here. The sample object. Or sample operator. Then we got the sample picks. Then we got the nearest, oops, nearest, then we got nearest picks. Alrighty. So the first one we are going to see is actually the nearest object. So if you remember from last videos, we saw that the matrix has some coordinates for every cell uh, inside this matrix. Okay, so every cell inside the matrix has its own coordinates. We can see, for example, those coordinates using a, a JIT cell block object. Connect to the output too. And, oh, this is, uh, this is going to be a char video. So let's actually convert this into a float matrix using, uh, using a matrix in the between here just to have a float output. Okay, so now the matrix in the output is become float before it was type char because JIT movie by default gives us a matrix of type char, right? Okay, so now we can see that every cell has some numbers inside. We, if we fill it with the, the cell object, has some numbers inside that correspond to coordinates uh, of the input matrix. So every cell of the input matrix has its own coordinates. As you can see, we got 320 cells in this matrix because this video is uh, uh, this matrix is 320 by 240, which is by the way the size of the Beeble movie in pixels. And as you can see, we got 320 cells horizontally. So the indexing starts from zero and arrives to 320, uh, 319, sorry. And on the vertical axis, we go from zero to 239, so 240 cells in total, okay? And every cell has its own coordinates. It's a bit like the chess game where you got uh, the, um, the grid with the, with the coordinates for every um, place in the grid. And that's the same for matrices. They got all a coordinate which represent this specific cell in the matrix. So for example, if I say, okay, I want to get the cell with coordinates 34, 3, then I'm going to get exactly this cell here, right? And the pixels value that are inside this cell. So this is what all these sampling objects actually do. So for example, if I say, if I want to have this cell at uh, coordinates 7, 3, I'm going to get exactly only that cell as an output for all the cells uh, of the input matrix. Okay, let's make an example. So I'm going to use the nearest object on this. If I just apply it like this, nothing is gonna change. But then if I use like some coordinates, um, let's take for example a cell uh, fairly in the middle, 120 by 120. Okay, now it's going to give us only the value for that cell, okay? The cell that is at 128 and 128. Uh, for example, let's start with cell 00, and this is the cell on the top. Then I could choose, for example, oh no, sorry, I made a little mistake. This is, I have to use the object nearest picks for that, not the object nearest. We will see in a second the difference. But the object nearest picks is the one that will work with the wall coordinates. So let's try again. Okay, this is going to be the cell at 100, 100. This is going to be the cell at 00. zero. Let's try 180, 120. This should be around the... the uh, the trousers of the guy, so this makes it, uh, this gives us this green color. 
Okay, so we are basically selecting uh, exactly this cell. So the input matrix will come in, we go inside the nearest peaks object that will say, okay, which uh, cell do you want? Give me the cell that is at its coordinates, in, uh, in integer coordinates, in real coordinates, let's say. And give me this cell out for every cell of the input. So uh, for every cell that comes as an input, give me just this cell as an output. Okay, very well. So now what is the difference actually with the nearest object? The nearest object will get as an input uh, normalized coordinates. So for example, if I want the cell in the middle, I will have to say, okay, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So this is going to, instead of using integer coordinates, this is going to be to use normalized coordinates between 0 and 1. So this is going to use uh, integer screen coordinates, let's say. And this is going to go, this is going to use float normalized coordinates. So in between 0 and 1. Okay, that's the difference between the, the nearest and the nearest peaks object. So, for example, um, in this case, we could, for example, use the norm object, which just gives us the normalized coordinates between 0 and 1, right? This is what we will get as an output. And on the same way, with the nearest peaks, we could use, for example, the cell object that just gives us the coordinates, uh, the real screen coordinates in integers, right? It's the same object that we were uh, using here to just see it through the JIT cell block. Okay, very well. So, but now the cool thing is that not only we can uh, select only one cell we are interested in, we can also just play around with the, the position of the output cells. So we could modify the coordinates of the cells we are going, the, the cells we, are, we want to sample in order to modify where they are going to be in the output matrix. For example, let's say that I say plus 50, zero. So I'm going to get... I'm going to move, basically, all the coordinates of 50 points, which means, basically, I'm not starting anymore with the coordinate 0 here, I'm starting with coordinate 50 for the x-axis, which means I'm going to get the, all the cells that start at uh, the point 50 and then go all the way up until the end of the coordinates, and then we arrive here at 320 plus 50 at the end of the matrix, right? So why am I seeing, uh, again, the beginning of the video? That's because of the bound mode attribute. So the bound mode, by default, has this wrap mode. So the bound mode means how should the nearest object behave when we actually go above the boundaries of our video. So when the coordinates that we input go above uh, the actual coordinates of the input matrix. So by default is wrap, which basically just works like uh, a module operator. It will just go all the way back to, uh, we just go all the way back to to zero and then start again and um, and arrive to 50. Okay, so this is by default the wrap mode. There is also another mode which is called the clip. No, it's called clamp. Sorry, I always have this wrong. It's called clamp that will basically just use the latest coordinate that was not uh, um, beyond the actual coordinates of the cell uh, of the matrix. Okay. So in this case, it's going to use the, the color of the last cells here as the, as the value for all the cells uh, beyond that. So for all the cells that are beyond the 320x uh, coordinates for this matrix. Okay, it's always going to use the latest color here. And this is an effort that you see used a lot in videos, for example, in this kind of Kurokawa style things. Uh, this gets used a lot, this kind of effect. We can see how to replicate this effect uh, in, uh, in a kind of a nice way in some future videos. So, now what we got, we got also the mirror bound mode, which basically mirrors mirrors the uh, the window, um, the matrix that comes in. So, for example, if I make 1060, which is 320 divided by 2, we are simply mirroring, basically, so we are starting from 160, we're going all the way up to 320, and then it's basically mirroring uh, the coordinates. So, instead of uh, just uh, wrapping them, it's actually basically making the, the width minus the, the coordinate, which then gives us this mirror effect. So this is the three bound modes. Let's actually write them down. Bound modes, we got mirror, we got wrap, and we got clump. Alrighty. 
Okay, so let's look at something else that we can do with the, with the sampling objects. So, for example, I'm now only uh, summing a fixed number to the, um, to the actual coordinates. But, for example, we could get a bit more creative. Let's actually go on and use, instead of the, the nearest pix, the nearest object, which will work. If you remember, this will work with normalized coordinates. Alrighty. So let's, for example, switch the x from the normalized coordinates and the y as well. Okay. And then we could, for example, instead of using just the x-coordinates they, as they are, we could, for example, I don't know, multiply the x-coordinates by 2 pi, and then take, for example, uh, the sine of that, but only the absolute value, because we don't want to go negative, we don't want to have negative coordinates at this point, and then the like, epsilon coordinates we can just use as they are. So let's see what we get. Okay, so basically we are uh, sampling the x coordinates using the sine, which then means they will go from zero, go all the way up to, uh, to one, then go back to zero, then all the way up to one, then go back to zero, and so on. So this is, uh, this is one way we can uh, use these kind of things. We can, for example, use the same for the, for the epsilon, just for fun, and see what we get. Ah, cool. So this is how it's going to look. We could, for example, use again uh, our time thing to just animate these coordinates, right? Instead of using the sine and cosine, we could, for example, just uh, multiply these values by, for example, 10. So we multiply it before we actually switch, so we just need to do it once. Then we can use modulo 1, so the coordinates will always go in between uh, 0 and 1, and then we can actually use these as our coordinates in order to kind of have multiple times the same video. Right, because uh, this is just going to go between 0 and 1 uh, 10 times, which then gives us 10 times uh, the whole video sampled, but in a much smaller amount of space, of out output space. Okay, very nice. One other thing that we can do, for example, is to use, for example, the noise operator. And, for example, switch the x from that. Um, sorry, actually, still wanted to have the x and the y from the norm, right? So the noise operator, we didn't look at it yet, basically gives us a random number every, every frame for how many planes we got in the, in the input matrix. So it has as many planes as the input matrix. It's a generator and generates an random number, uh, one number for every plane. So, for example, we could switch the x and the y for that. Then we could, for example, multiply it by something really small in order to not have a too big of um, a displacement. Now we can, for example, create another vector with uh, using our x coordinates, uh, but some to the noise. Okay, so this is our gonna look like. So every frame this will give us some more di uh, different random values which then uh, will create this kind of effect. Oh, we can use another. Uh, we can use these as well. Whoops. can use these as well also for the y. Right. And then we get this kind of uh, this kind of effect. If we don't want this effect to be, those noise to be different every frame, we can for example use a JIT noise uh, uh, a JIT noise generator here from the outside, so 4, floor 32, 320 by 240, we will make, oh sorry, this was meant to be a 4, we'll make it as big as the input matrix, let's actually bang it, and then we can use that, for example, as our noise, so this will not change every frame, but will be constant until we actually bang it. until we actually bang the input. If we will do this, uh, this matrix smaller, it will be the same as, as if it would, uh, as if we would uh, just attach a JIT matrix here with interp zero. So it's just going to fill uh, uh, every ten cells of this uh, second matrix with uh, the same num the same values from the input noise. Okay, let's just take a look at it. Okay, you can see that every ten cells have the same values. And then it changed because this this uh, matrix is ten times the size of this one. So since we have interpret zero, it's not going to interpolate it. This will be if it will be interpolated, we will have also this kind of nice effect. 
Uh, but if we say interpret zero is not going to interpolate between those values, just going to replicate them as they are. Uh, okay, this is pretty cool. Uh, this is one way uh, we can use the, the nearest. So these are some ways we can use the sample objects, okay? The only difference between the nearest and the nearest peaks we said is the fact that the nearest peaks take, takes integer screen coordinates, the nearest takes float normalized coordinates. So according to what you need to do, it can be better to use uh, float normalized coordinates or to use the uh, integer coordinates with the nearest peaks object. Okay, so now let's actually take a look at the difference between the nearest and the sample. So the sample object works kind of in the same way. It also takes uh, some. Uh, it also takes uh, normalized uh, coordinates as an input between zero and one. The only difference is that sample is going to to make interpolation between adjacent cells, between neighboring cells. Okay. So, float normalized coordinates interpolates. So it's going to interpolate between neighboring cells. And the same, the same thing does the sample picks, only that it will take integer coordinates instead of float normalized coordinates. So what do I mean with interpolates? Let's, for example, take a look at, instead of going in with, um, with the video, let's actually go in, in with this noise. So suck. Okay, so we got the noise as an output. Let's make it actually even smaller, for example, 10 by 10. And let's actually not connect it to this matrix. So we just have an input matrix of 10 by 10 and an output matrix of 10 by 10. Okay, cool. Let's actually delete these as well and let's create another uh, GP window for comparison. So on one side we will use the sample object, on the other side we will use the nearest, just to see the difference between these two uh, operators. So output two, these we don't want anymore. Okay, let's connect the norm object also here. Okay, so output one is going to be the sample, output two is going to be the nearest. Let's see what we get. Okay, so as you can see, the sample object is kind of um, as a different result in the output because it's actually interpolating between neighboring cells. It's going to look at the value uh, of the cells around the cell we are currently work is it currently working on, and it's going to interpolate it with the value of the current cell in order to uh, provide us with the um, with the out output uh, result. Okay, so if we don't want this interpolation, we just need to use the nearest uh, object, which is going to basically not using sampling, but simply to take the nearest cell that, has, that is closer to these actual coordinates. That's why it's called nearest. So for example, I could give it uh, some uh, coordinates that are not exactly the coordinate of a cell, like for example, 0 0.1, 0 0.7, something like this. And this is going just to take the cells that it nearest to these actual coordinates, okay? While the, the sample object is not going to exactly take that cell, but is going to make an interpolation between this cell and the adjacent cells. Okay, this is why we see a different behavior. This looks a bit more like a washed color, actually. As a different, as simply as a different uh, behavior. We can see it, for example, also using the movie. Let's maybe make this input smaller. You can maybe see it better. Exactly here is you can see it's a bit more uh, smooth the change between the different cells, and in this case, it's a bit more rough. So depending on the result you want, you uh, will uh, choose to use the nearest or the sample object. Most of the time, you probably want to use the nearest because you don't want to have these um, you don't want to have these um, interpolation thing. But sometimes you can choose to have the interpolation thing. A lot of times it actually helps uh, with stuff. So you will want to use the sample. Okay, so I think this is going to be it for this video. I think this was a little introduction to sample nearest uh, and uh, the sampling operators, which I use a lot in my in a lot of my videos. So if you encounter them now on my videos, you will know what they actually do, hopefully. Okay, so thank you very much for following. As always, you can check my Patreon for a uh, lot more patches and content and the Discord community. And in any case, see you soon with uh, a lot of more uh, learning videos. Okay, thank you very much again and see you soon. Ciao.